All right, what is going on guys? Joe here from Make My Athletics, and today I'm going to be going over a conventional deadlift tutorial. So what I'm going to be doing today is going to be, like I said, the conventional deadlift. Conventional deadlift is going to be a more narrow stance with your hands outside of your legs. In a sumo stance, which you might have heard of, or a sumo deadlift, that is going to be a little bit different. Your hands are actually on the inside of your legs, and you're a little bit wider. So today is going to be conventional deadlift, like I said, and if you'd like a sumo deadlift tutorial, let me know in the comments below so we can make that happen. So what I'm going to be going over today is going to be the initial overall setup, execution, and just overall mental cues and technique that I apply and I tell my clients to apply to their own training. So these are going to be some tips that you're going to be able to directly apply to your own training and hopefully give you some insight that you don't already know. So I'm also going to be going over a few things that I think will help when it comes to just programming, um, just different insights that you might already know, might not, might not already know, excuse me, um, and just hopefully give you more value than just the initial technique and tutorial itself. So getting into things guys, I'm going to go over the deadlift itself first here. When it comes to the deadlift, the main thing you need to focus on when you're initially setting up is going to be your foot placement. So you want to be about hip to shoulder width, a lot of people find a comfortable place and it really differs based on the person. So I'm about hip width, but I'm actually a pretty narrow stance compared to most people. So I would say most people are around somewhere between shoulder and hip width, or kind of somewhere in between them. So as you get set up, the other thing you want to make sure is that you're not too far away from the bar, but you're also not too close to the bar. Where you want to be is splitting the bar right over the top of your foot, right in the middle. That is going to put you in a really good spot to get yourself set up. From there, the next thing that I'm going to be focusing on as I get down here, and one thing I actually want to be covering before I get into that is, when you do get into your first grip, what you're going to notice is I'm going to use a double overhand grip, where both of my hands are over the top. This is going to be the safest grip. You will see, see people go over under, where they have this dominant arm, or they're not dominant arm, just depending, actually flip, so the grip is actually upside down. What that's going to actually do from this, right here, compared to this, or compared to this, when you flip it, is going to give you more grip strength. But what happens a lot of times is, people will tend to bend their elbow, and then from there, it's going to put your bicep at a little bit more risk for tearing. I don't want to scare you because if you have straight arms and you start the deadlift how you should, which we're going to go into, you won't have anything to worry about even if you choose to go with the over under grip. But it does get a bad rap quite frequently. Also people say that your shoulder stabilization and your structure might get blown off by doing an over under grip, but I, I tend to actually disagree with that, but I still do do an over under grip only when I'm getting to my heavy sets, when the grip is starting to be the limiting factor in my training. Which goes into another thing, I know I'm going off topic here for a second, but it does apply, straps. So straps are going to be something that you will benefit from, but honestly, it is only going to be something you want to incorporate when needed. And also, if you're someone who plans to train to compete in a powerlifting meet, you will not be able to use straps in the meet, so that's just something to consider. A lot of powerlifters do still train with straps, but do keep in mind that when you do compete, you will not be able to use straps. So, keep that in mind, but like I said, straps are a great tool, I use them on my training as well, to actually allow you to literally just be able to move more weight effectively. So, anyways guys, getting back to it, like I said, you set up, find your distance between your feet, once you get to this point, you're going to be setting up, dropping down, so I like to push my hips back, also bending up the knees naturally. And when I get set up here, I want to focus on creating as much tightness as possible. So with an over under grip, it's going to look a little different, but the same things apply. So I'm going to actually focus on wrapping my bicep around my tricep. And what I mean by that is actually creating torque within my shoulders. So right here, after I get set up, I'm rotating through, which is going to actually bring myself into a stronger and safer position. So wrapping my biceps over my triceps. So squeezing, almost trying to bend the bar, and what you're going to feel is your lats engage, as well as the rest of your back. So from here, I'm in a tight position. If someone knocks me, I'm not going anywhere. So as I get into this position, you're creating tight. 
tightness to then drive through the floor with your feet. So you actually are pushing through the floor as you're pulling up. So both things are happening there. And that's a key thing that a lot of people don't think about. They just try to yank the bar off the floor. But you actually want to drive through with your feet at the same time. The other thing is you want to keep your head neutral. So looking down at the ground in front of you, not at the mirror. I actually have a bad habit of doing that. You want to look at the ground right in front of you. And then as you can set up here, you're going to create that tightness. Rotate, bicep over tricep, rotate those elbows, creating that tightness, squeeze down on those lats trying to bend the bar, and as I drop up, boom. I'm squeezing the bar down, and as I drive up, I want to focus on creating that tightness, squeezing my glutes out of the top, squeezing your butt at the top, bringing the hips to the bar itself. The other thing you really want to think about is as you're creating that tightness and you're pulling, you do not want your hips, so you do not want your hips to shoot up first. So you do not want it to look like this. Right? That's not what we want. We want it to be smooth, and we also don't want it to be a squat either. We don't want to be here, sitting way back down, right? It's got to be fluid. It's a hinging movement. You're hinging at the hips. So you're here, set up, squeeze tight, exhale at the top. Slow and control. That's another thing that a lot of people ask about. Why I drop the bar so fast, or why people drop the bar so fast, when the eccentric portion, or the lowering portion of the movement, actually recruits more muscle fibers on all movements, which is true. The big thing and the big reason that I drop the bar is because when it comes to actually being able to move the most amount of weight, I want to save the energy on my negative phase rather than going slow to actually be able to move the most amount of weight possible during my working sets or my top sets for the day. It's a very powerful oriented mindset. But if you're just focusing on muscle mass, then yes, you do want to control the eccentric. And a lot of times, there's actually powerlifting coaches out there who will recommend you doing slow eccentric negative work, which is eccentric and negative are the same, same thing, basically. Eccentric is just the actual physiological term. Anyways, point being here, guys, is you really do want to get to a point where you understand why you're training the deadlift, and quite frankly, this is going to be a little controversial, but not really. Most people would agree with me. When it comes to just building muscle, you don't have to train the deadlift to even build muscle. There's been points in my training where I didn't train the deadlift at all. And I do not want to sit here and say that the deadlift was a make or break in the amount of muscle I have on my body right now. I do like deadlifting, and it's quite frankly just a fun movement. I've put on muscle from it, and you do put on muscle from it, but I do not think from a specific hypertrophy standpoint that you need to deadlift. So, Anyways, I will go into that more in detail if you'd like in another video on why or not you need to deadlift for muscle mass. But hopefully this helps. Hopefully this gave you guys some insight and some tips and some things that you can take away. And if you guys would like to see any more tutorial videos, let me know in the comments below. Take it easy, guys.